the subject of this demo i'm trying to, trying to think of a theme for this and it was going to be fast moving river i know i was requested to do a babbling brook well we've got a babbling brook here in abundance a fast moving river how do we paint that in watercolor the rays of the sun coming through those trees as well and also i think it's about knowing your brushes and the the right brush for the right technique so the subject for this demo is the white river in washington state thanks very much dom for the kind sharing of your source image and i think this photograph is pretty much there as regards the composition i think the the water line is just about right there um sort of about a, a third of the way down the the paper and we've got these two figures here with the rubber inflatable um, on that sort of third really nicely placed already looking over to the other third there's there's this little bit of white water there which i think is a nice balance to those figures but there's four there's four main elements to to this subject and I've got them summarized here. Pretty logical. So number one will be, and this might be the sequence in which I paint. Number one, the background. Trying to get, trying to push it back. All right, we don't want it to, I know, I know the photograph is lovely and green, um, a, lo a lovely vibrant green in places, but we don't want to make it too green. We want to try and push it back. And then we've got the effect of the sun not too high in the sky, the sun with the rays coming through the trees. Number two, the river and trying to get the sense of movement and the light over there. All right. Quite dark on this side. Quite dark on this side. Very light here. Well, it's going to be unpainted paper, pretty much white paper showing through. Number three, the boulders and rocks in the bottom right corner. And number four, the inflatable with the two figures. To simplify this, if you didn't want to, each, each of those four elements is quite difficult, I think. This is, this is a, a challenging scene and we've got to try and always challenge ourselves to push ourselves to doing something a little bit more complicated. And this has got four fairly complex elements. If you want to make it simpler yourself, for those of you on Patreon, you could remove the figures and the boat. Just do background, river, boulders. If you wanted it simpler still, just do the background and the river, all right? So this could be simplified if you want to. So that's my plan. And also I was going to cover the the choice of brushes, which I will do when when I as I go through, particularly on the river part. I think the choice of brush there is the most important element of the whole of the whole painting. Materials I'm using for this demo. Saunders Waterford watercolour paper, cold press, 300 grams, 15 inches by 11 inches. Paints, I'm using Jackman's Art, Jackman's Art Materials, handmade watercolour paints, but any good quality paints will do, of course. Neutral tint, it's the same, same colours as I always use. Neutral tint, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, spring green, that's a new one um, from Jackman's Art and Viridian Green, Cobalt Turquoise, Cerulean Blue, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Red, English Oxide or uh, Light Red, Cadmium Orange, Cadmium Yellow. Three mixing wells, got my water and my sponge over to the right. And brushes, well, I'm going to be using a mixture of mainly synthetic brushes so a couple of size 12s here 
one with longer hairs than the other one. More on that in a minute. And then a couple of smaller ones as well. I may use a bigger mop brush. As regards brushes, the choice of brushes, let me cover this river. That needs, I think, needs a particular choice of brush and a brush that you're familiar with and your familiarity with your paper surface as well. I did a little experiment before coming online and I split my paper up into three sections and I'm replicating just this river, just this slice of river. Dark on the left, light on the right. The top third was done with a squirrel mop. Quite a sort of large-ish um, squirrel mop. And the technique which with each of those the, these little experiments was to use the brush and not too much paint on the brush and touching the surface very lightly at an angle um, quite a low angle, dragging it from left to right. Um, if you're left-handed, I'm not sure how you how you'd be doing it, but you'll you'll know. So me me being right-handed is a little bit easier for me, dragging from the left to the right. And as I come over to the right, well, I'm running out of paint on the brush. Hopefully, we get that little bit of a, a sparkle on the water. Uh, because there's less paint on the brush and we've got that fairly rough surface that won't show up um, on camera but a fairly rough surface so that's the squirrel mop number one then middle one was a synthetic mop brush from Raphael, a size four so a medium size and same same thing dragging from left to right and then the third one i used a a Princeton Aqua Elite, um, a long round brush, but basically a, it's a soft synthetic brush with, with kind of good point. And I think out of the three, I'm happiest with the, the third one, this, this choice of brush. So I'm going to be using that one for the water. And it was particularly useful for doing, there's, there's also different elements to the water. You just have got to, got to observe the source image a little bit more. Well, if you're looking at a moving river, just spend five minutes looking at it and thinking, how will I get that kind of technique, that wave, that that ripple, the 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 white water um, with with watercolor, and then using that, using this little sharp point there, for little tiny details in river, bits of reflections, darker reflections showing through, and it's a mixture of edges as well, many soft edges. So we're going to have to work um, quite quick on, on that section, as indeed we will on the background as well. Right. Are there any questions before I start then? Let's just check my question section. Oh, no, don't think there's any questions. Great. Okay, well, let me start by making an outline drawing with a 2B pencil. This is gonna be a fairly basic drawing, but I will concentrate on getting the figures and the inflatable right first um, before painting and the boulders. Starting, um, my drawing is gonna start with the water's edge on the far side of the river and making sure I've got enough space for the river and the figures. Just drawing a fairly horizontal line maybe a little bit softer or not at all on the right hand side just to keep my options open with open with those those rays of light coming down right now let 
now the figures. Now, look for a reference point. The With the two figures, that figure there, looking at the distance between the water's edge and the, the top of the guy's head, and that one, he's a little bit higher as well. He's standing further back, trying to get that perspective right as well. And thinking about the size of the figures also, not too small, not too large. So I'm going to get largest figure in here. Might be best just to press not too hard. First of all, just in case you make a little mistake. And they both got sort of guillets on or jackets. So they're pretty sort of bulky. And this leading figure, he almost disappears into the water. And the reflections from the boat. So we don't need to worry too much about the that leading figure's uh, legs. So there's his face. And his legs are actually in the water, aren't they? Now let's put in the front of the inflatable and then the bottom of the boat and the left hand side actually comes over a little bit more. The right hand side of the boat and now for figure number two top of the head slightly above this guy that guy's head is too big and figure number two let's have him about there and they both got a sort of angle on their figures they're pushing this boat up the uh, up the river so trying to get that angle of these two figures that way that way and then that way that way and then that way and second figures arms well you can hardly make it out exactly where they are but there this left arm is across his body and it's sort of pushing or attaching something it's attached to something on the boat and it's very light in there that's actually catching a lot of light just in there now ignoring some of the detail in the boat there's a or or oh, maybe maybe it's fishing rods i think it's fishing rods going across the the uh going across the boat now for the boulders i'm just looking for shapes and
they are fairly rounded boulders light hitting the top and the right hand side of the boulders they are very round aren't they there's going to be a lot of hardened soft edges in this I'm not copying the boulders exactly in the photo, but just generally trying to get the same sort of feeling of all of these different shapes. So light there, light there. And then in between the big boulders, there's lots of little stones and tiny tiny rocks but we don't make it too detailed too fussy because the main focal the main focus of this painting are on the, the figures the light not necessarily lots of detail of boulders down here but just getting the feeling of all of those rocks and that edge there so when i paint the river i'm going to be going up to the edge of these boulders so i'm just making just so it shows up for you this is darker than i would go myself but just so that I can see and show you that edge of the boulders. So I'm just double checking my two figures and boat. The other, the other element I wanted to include and to paint around. So we've got the light, we've got all the light over there. And then my eye was caught by this little bit of turbulence in the water here. So, and I think that's quite nicely placed on that third and a bit of a balance to that. So maybe, we can emphasize that and look at the shape of this slither of white water it's it's almost like an arrowhead so there's a point and then it goes up and then it sort of it goes a little bit more horizontal then then up a little bit and then it sort of travels along at a slight angle and then the bottom edge bit of an angle up do you see so try and think about that shape and we'll put it and looking at the distance of it from the far side of the river around about it's almost in line with the with the uh, figures heads so around about there so there's my point again I'm making it a little bit darker not too i don't want to make the shape too fat and it sort of tails away and goes slightly uphill a little bit so when i paint the water i had to, had to try and remember to keep that um keep that white but it's a little bit darker towards the tail but lighter lighter there Okay, are there any questions? Let me just get in the, roughly the tree line. Are there any questions before I start?
start painting. Hopefully you can, can you all see my pencil line all right? If someone, somebody could just pop in a yes. And confirm that you can see my drawing okay. I don't need to strengthen any lines. Yeah, okay, thanks, Laurie. Good. Now, section number one, the background and the rays of light coming through those trees. This, I believe, is best done, for me personally, best done with a very damp surface. So I'm going to have to pre-wet this, get in a little bit of sky on the left. We can just see a, a tiny bit of blue there. But this is white. We're leaving the paper here. And then trying to create those rays of light by leaving them leaving the paper unpainted but being being on a damp surface we're going to get those very soft edges and using a i'm going to be using primarily a synthetic brush for this just using my my brush and some darker paint not too dark here i'll get darker as i go over the left but just starting from the water's edge and dragging my brush up. But thinking about the rays, these rays, they're sort of emanating from here. And there's one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. All right, so I'm gonna have to create those rays by leaving the paper unpainted do the dark in between those rays and on a damp surface hopefully we get that soft edge and then maybe as it's drying just a little bit we can start to put in a bit of detail of some of these fir trees and look at the fir trees they're they're not too dense or well, well they are <laughs> there's a little bit of density there but we can see through them and these very faint little horizontal um, branches coming out from the main trunk right to and then go up being conical in shape as well over here we'll keep it nice and nice and simple so i'm going to pre-wet the paper with a mop brush just the top third okay so clear water that top third an even application of water down to the water's edge and thick paper might need a good application of water or maybe go over it twice just to make sure it's well and truly damp As I'm doing this, I'm, I'm looking at it against the light just to make sure I've covered the whole area and to also try and make sure it's fairly even as well. And if the paper's buckling, that there's no sort of accumulation of water in one of the little um, troughs in the paper little dips of the paper. There we go. Now with my synthetic brush number 12, just getting some color in there. I'm going to pick up a bit of Viridian green, a little bit of burnt umber, maybe a little bit of ultra blue and 
No. Just come over. A bit, bit of bit of that spring green. So it's a dark pale green. And start to get in these rays of light over there. If you find you're, you're losing the, if you find that the, you're losing that gap of light, you could use another synthetic brush that's damp and then just go down and lift off that paint again, but it's gotta be wet. And it's got to be clean as well. Right, just continue. just down towards the river bank. It does get a little bit darker. Now, as I come over to the left, I'm gonna get stronger with the colors and darker as well. A little bit, a little bit greener, but you don't wanna make it too bright, that green. and try and make the application as solid as you can. Not too many white gaps showing through. I need to be very careful not to muck about too much with this area. Okay, now that's drying quite nicely. Uh, it's not too dry where I am, so I've got a bit of time to, to work on things. With a smaller brush now, let's just see if we can get in some of these fir trees and smaller brush now with a good point. Basically the same color as I have before. Viridian green, a little bit of burnt umber. Thicker now, not too watery. 
and I'm just creating a little quick upward stroke with the brush. The paper's still damp. I'm going to still get that, that soft edge. Pick up a little bit of blue. So a fairly soft background. Um, pick up the my original brush number 12. Let's go a little bit darker along the riverbank here so altering blue burnt sienna and not too watery got to keep fairly thick just going along that sort of ridge that we've got on that far side. And then that, that ridge, it sort of gradually comes down to the water's edge and there's, um, the, the slope is less steep and it's sort of, there's lots of little chips and boulders and rocks over there but not too much, not too much detail. Right. I could go in this a little bit darker in there. Got to be very careful now not to go too dark. And I don't want to get any hard edges in there. Could also just try and get in the appearance of a few little those, those little thin horizontal. I need a smaller brush. Back to this brush and not too much paint on the brush. Um, my paper is still too damp. And when I I touch the surface it goes a little bit I don't get that um, hard enough edge and I think there's just a bit too much detail now appearing on that background I need to stop it now Otherwise I could put, if I, if I don't stop, I get in too much detail, but so far so good. We've got the, the rays of the light coming in. We've got that soft background and not too much detail. You could play around with some of the little horizontal branches, but to be honest with you, 
if you squint your eyes, I think just that upward stroke, that um, that will suffice. Right, are there, oh, there's a question. Let me ask this question. Hang on a second. Um, Helen is asking, how about lifting out the rays? Yes, you could. You've got to be very careful to not overwork it, but yes, you could lift out the rays. That could I could have painted over that with a solid color and then lifted off with a clean brush, clear water, clean water, and um, make sure that the, the brush is damp so that it's gonna suck up that, that paint. Yeah, so making sure that the paint surface is quite damp um, or still still moist. And yes, then just lifting it off. But I think you might get a cleaner approach by, for, for me anyway, personally, by having that really damp surface and then darker paints, just creating the darker parts, the, the darker segments between the lighter rays. All right. And hopefully it's quite light up there. I haven't done the blue, forgotten that. Don't worry about that. So it's a fairly clear sky. Don't worry about it if you haven't put the blue in there. Right, water. My long round Princeton Aquilite. And if you haven't got this brush, then I would say a good medium sized uh, brush with a good point so that you can make these sort of um, the, the shapes of the waves a little bit more um, effectively than, than a bigger brush when I was doing my, my little experiments. Okay. The color of the water. Value wise, obviously darker here, light over there. But in that water, I see blues and greens. So there's little patches of green and then patches of blue. And it's all soft edges, apart from some of the edges around the, the, the turbulence and, and also some of these little darker reflections as well. All right, and there's obviously the darker reflection for the boat. I'm just gonna concentrate on painting the river now over most of the, um, the, the two guys, the inflatable, and up to the side of the rocks. I'm going to be using mostly, let's mix here, mostly a bit of cobalt turquoise and maybe a little bit of green now and again. Oh, it's too green. A little bit of cobalt turquoise and maybe a little bit of cobalt blue. Let's mix up plenty of this and then starting from the left hand side around my shape and then as I come over to the right hand side, just drag the brush just a little bit to create the feeling of light. And it doesn't matter if you leave little bits of the paper unpainted up to the side of that boat.
a little bit of cobalt blue. over the figure. If you want to darken things up a bit, a little bit of altering blue and Burnt Sienna. So keep alternating the the colors and the intensity now. While the surface is still damp just drop in little streaks you get that softness appearing try not to go over the whiter areas that you've left I'm going to go too green. Now, I've got the feeling the river is flowing quite fast. It's going in a sort of circular motion. So that's the direction of my brush. It's quite dark at the top here as well. So I'm keeping at it, just dropping in this darker color to get the soft edges. I need to go over to my boulders. There's a little bit of disturbance in the water there. And then just to the right of the figures, there's just a little bit of, now I'm using the, the side of the brush, if I can, side of the brush and just drag Just drag very gently across
I'm looking at the photograph now just for some extra guidance on where I can put in a little bit more detail and marks. Top left corner, I think is quite brown up there where we've got the reflection of the trees. I'm starting on my tape and then dragging my brush over. Now, as the paper's drying a little bit, I can now go in with some of these darker reflections, but not too dark, and try not to get the edges too hard with them. So ideally, the, the surface of the paper's still got a little bit of a little bit of dampness in it. Um, I'll stick with the same brush, trying to get these little dark reflections. Uh, same colors really as before cobalt turquoise uh, she might be dark enough and then just do a little test that's too wet i was touching the surface and it sort of disappeared So try again. And my paper's actually damper here. It's drier over there. Well, that is just a bit too dark there. If I find it's too dark or the edge is too hard, I find just a bit of a gentle lifting off with the finger. some of these darker waves they've got a soft edge and a hard edge so it's generally a harder edge just where we got the, the crest of that, that wave and then it's got a, a soft edge as it sort of curves up towards the the crest of the next wave Let's get in a few few more. Little darker reflections. We might use a bit of white paint later on when it's all dry, just to try and add a few more 
highlights to the river and little sparkles of light. Okay. So we've got the light there, a little bit of a, a ripple here within the ripple. You can see just a little bit of, I'm touching ever so lightly with my brush now, just a few little darker specks. And the in the distance, the far side, there's a little bit of light over there. There we go. Hopefully a movement of water and we will um, add in a little bit of white paint just to add those extra sparkles. Now for the boulders. So I'm going to do the boulders next and then the figures. Let me just check and see if there's any more questions. Um, and Dom, <laughs> Dom, trivia. I'm painting, we are painting this on the exact sixth anniversary of you taking the original photo. Well, now we've got the time of year. Um, have we got the time of day, Dom, as well? Uh, thanks very much again, Dom. It's a super picture, a uh, super photo. And um, yeah, what a, what a great place to be. Thanks very much, Dom. Don't think there's any more questions. All right. Now, figures. Drop down a size or two on brush. No, sorry, boulders. Drop down a size or two on the brush. I'm going to go for a size eight. And these boulders, they're, well, mostly they're warms, like a warmish gray. But there's some cools in there. This one here is quite brown. So it's got a little bit of a mixture of materials. Looks like there's a Coke can there. Um, a mixture of materials, all right, but a sort of warmish gray. And then we've got to go in quite dark, maybe a little bit of a hard edge, quite dark on this side of the boulders because of that bright light coming in. I'll mix a, a warmer color down here. Burnt sienna, a little bit of cerulean blue. It's quite a nice gray. Should a bit of, it's a bit of cobalt. And basically now cover all of the rock area, perhaps leaving just a few little gaps where there could be some light sparkling. Quite light there. And a bit of yellow ochre. Uh, 
a little bit cooler in the bottom right corner. Right, as this is drying, I now need to add in the darker shadows this side of the boulders to try and then create the create the, the, the form of those boulders and those round shapes. Might need to let this dry just a little bit. The shadow will be a cool colour. Go with cobalt blue or an ultramarine blue. A little bit of burnt umber or burnt sienna. Thicker colour. Just again, looking at the photo, keep looking at the photo for a little bit of guidance on some of these shadows. And it's quite dry up here. As I said, try not to put too much detail into these boulders. Otherwise, we'll just put, be putting too much attention into this area.
try now to pick out some of the dark recesses between the little rocks. Here we are. Might need to just make some of these rocks a bit darker. And then later on, or very shortly, I'm going to be connecting some of the reflections with these rocks, trying to connect the that element with the rocks so rather than making them too separated. Okay. Pay attention to some of my edges now. So we've got a hard edge just where the got a hard edge just where the shadow hits a boulder in front of it, the light hitting that boulder. So for example, that one and that one. You could do a little bit of splattering in there as well if you wanted to, but I think that's about it. There we are, hopefully the effect of boulders on the, on the river side. some distant rocks. Beyond. Right, are there any questions? Okay, next, the figures. Now, the figures, I wouldn't be too concerned with the colors, but think about the, the values and trying to get the, the, well, hopefully you've done a good drawing of those figures in the boat. So following your lines, leaving a little bit of light where the light's hitting the side of the inflatable. And once I've done the, the boat and the figures, then continuing with this little bit of a, a soft-ish reflection in the water where we, we almost we can't see the water's edge. We almost can't see where the guy's um, legs enter the water, all right, because of that similar similar value in there. Right, boat. The boat is generally darker than the water around it. So it's going with a neutral tint with a burnt umber. Bit of cerulean blue. I'll stick with this number eight brush. Uh, 
and the lower part of the inflatable up to the figure and then up the left hand side of the boat within the boat there's we can just see a little bit of the inside of the boat and the back of the boat it's got a sort of squarish box or something in there and the right hand side of the boat now this right hand side it's catching the light a lot there's a little bit of the water's edge we can see and some reflections coming out uh, figures let's do main leading figure first now I drew his hat in far too big I think it looked like a horse riding it looked like a horse riding helmet to me um, let's go a little bit smaller if I can because it's almost the same size as his head And don't worry too much about the colors. Just try and get in the, the right values. He's got, it's not a gilet, it's be a life jacket, won't it? So his life jacket goes just behind his left arm and disappears down. And then we've got his, pick up a bit of light red his shirt or something down there and his arm and the arm the other side of course Maybe a little bit, a tiny bit of light hitting either side of the arm. And then continue down. Now, while this figure is still quite damp, I'm going to add in the reflections. So let's go with a cobalt turquoise reflection, a greenish reflection. And connect with the boat, connect with the guy's legs.
just a few little dark reflections coming out that side. Yep, yeah, so his legs almost disappear um, into this darker area here. Right, figure number two. Um, let's actually paint in a little bit of his face, first of all. And then his arms. And body. Altering blue, it's quite dark. Altering blue, a little bit of burnt sienna. Got the hat. And shirt. Painting quite tight now. <laughs> I normally don't like doing this, but when you're trying to well, essentially, we're, we're copying a photograph and it tends to make you quite, quite tight painting style wise. So thinking about that angle now again, cover up some of those little white bits and then into the water, pick up a bit of reflections. I think I might get the fishing rods in. So same brush, number eight. And I haven't drawn these in, but they're angling slightly down. And they're going... over to that figure. I guess they're connecting things quite well. And the fishing reel there. Um, few darker reflections in the water. Let's go a little bit darker. A little bit darker at the base of these boulders, maybe where the water has been lapping over and it's, they're gonna look a little bit um, darker. Too much detail. Right. Uh, I think I'm going to add a little bit of colour to this guy's face. It's a bit too dark. Looks like he's got a face covering over him. Let's just add in thick paint now. And A 
Let's see a bit better. Yep. Do they look like a couple of fishing guys? Um, this jacket needs to be a bit darker. So I'm lightly touching this low area here just to get in some darker reflections. And Does the far side need to be a bit darker? There. Um, no, I think I'll leave it. I'm going to rub out some of those pencil lines there. And to finish up with, to finish up with a little bit of white paint so just little dabs here and there, maybe with a dry brush, that might just help that fit like over here, there's a bit more white water here, a little bit of white paint, then drag to the right, a little bit of white paint, drag to the right. That might work quite well. I need to have a good clean brush, um, slightly, slightly damp. So I just wet this brush and squeeze out the water. Bit of white paint now. So. In a few selected areas. And then a few little lines here. And then just a few more, a few more here. Finish lines, horizontal, generally starting from the left and dragging right, starting from the left, dragging right. Um, And 
now. Could we have a little bit of highlight on the guy's hat? And black jacket just a bit. Um, bit of light on his right arm. Perhaps a bit of, actually that, that might work quite well. A bit of light on some of these rocks. Tiny bit, just to get, get, get a bit more of the round, round shape of the tops. Tops of those rocks, just catching the light. Just in here, let's create a bit more. Disturbance in here. Right, I think I'm nearly done. A few more little dabs of white paint. There we are. That's it. Well, thanks for watching the demo. I'll just see if there's any more questions coming through. Ooh. Let's just check for questions. Um, Bob, if we wanted to extend the rays onto the rocks as in the photo, how is best time to do it? I think, okay, so what Bob is saying, in the photo, these rays sort of, now there are some lines on my printout, so ignore these little lines in there. But yeah, you can just detect on that, particularly on that boulder there, that light, there's more rays coming in, coming in over that boulder. Well, the, 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 the same process as the background. So um, maybe just have one big boulder there on the right, and clear water, all right, and then paint in those rays, those dark rays as we did up there, those dark rays. And you might need to go, you would be going darker, and also the rays are, are less, they're, they're not as strong as the rays up here. So the actual lighter bits, they're not white paper. You would just let the you would make it a little bit darker and you might need to if it goes a little bit too dark then then um, a synthetic brush clean water and just from the top of the boulder um, just stroke down or in the direction of the rays so making sure that they're kind of parallel to those rays up there and they're in line so just lift off a bit of paint lift off a bit of paint that's how you might do it 
you might want to have done the blue sky i left that out i don't think it matters to be honest with you um that blue in there is such a small little bit perhaps we're getting more of an impact of that that brighter sky up there fairly pleased with the trees i went in with too much detail i started talking about getting in these horizontal branches that's too much detail they're in the distance there must be 200 meters 200 yards away maybe too much detail uh, we want to make that back we want we want the the um the, we want the the message of those rays that's the, the that's the strong bit about the background the rest of it is immaterial uh and then the water yeah fairly pleased with the water and that little bit of white bit there i'm fairly pleased with that the boulders as well the fishing guys they look all right to me um yeah perhaps the boat could be done a little bit better i've got the back of the boat <clears throat> that back of the boat could be a little bit lighter couldn't it that back of the boat there could be a little bit lighter maybe if i was a bit more careful with the painting up to the boat where i had that pencil line of the back of the boat and then there's a bit of an angle and then it comes down the right hand side just had to be a little bit more careful painting around there all right um yes yeah, so <laughs> i was going on there bob hope that hope that answers your question right casper um the kinds of casper the kinds of cameras i would buy don't do very well at taking pictures against the sun so colors will be off when I saw this, I thought about making the sunlight warmer instead of what just white. Is this improving on photocolors? Something you think about when painting your photos? I think my paper is not pure white. There is a high white um, paper. This is just off white, not cream, but it's not pure white. If I, if I had a piece of paper here and put it against that, you would just see a subtle difference. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. When you look at the photo here, I'm picking up a little bit of a golden color almost, but I want to think about the impact Casper of the, the, the contrast in values. So I wanted to be very light there and dark here could have gone a bit darker over there, but if I went too dark, it brings it too far forward. So I had to be very careful over there. And I started mucking about with the little blobs. Didn't, didn't really need it to be honest with you. Um, but I know what you mean, Casper. Yeah, that, that could improve on the photo colours and add another dimension to it, a little bit of warmth in there. Um, exactly, I do agree with you. Thanks, thanks, Casper. Brilliant, brilliant point. Um, thanks, Betty. As always, thank you. Right, um, so if you are on the relevant um, Patreon level, uh, then you'll be doing a, a uh, doing the painting and uh, take a photo photograph of it and then send it to me via email. Don't worry, I'm going to put the full instructions on a posting, okay? So that you will get the full the full details of um, of uh, the the submission process. Um, but but hopefully in the next few weeks, I'll love to see your your pictures um, if you're on the critique level and anyone irrespective of critique of critique level, any irrespective of Patreon tier level. Um, please, please, if you do it, if you make an attempt at this, pop it up on our community tab where we would love to see it and all um, pass our comments about it. Uh, right. Well, thank you very much indeed. Those of you watching live, I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch up with you real soon. I don't know whether you, there's a there's a police helicopter that's been hovering above my house for the last quarter of an hour. It's been putting me off. Uh, you, I don't know whether it's picked up on the microphone, but they're not after me. <laughs> uh, maybe they're trying to arrest me for too much use of white paint. Maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know whether you can hear it. It's a really, it's, that helicopter is really low now. Anyway, thanks very much indeed. And um, I'll speak 
to you soon. Looking forward to seeing your photos. Cheers, everyone.